everybody. Welcome back to 10 Minute Reviews. <laughs> this is Freya. <laughs> this is Freya, my fuzzy co star, and I'm Jason. And we're, all right, one more. Thank you. And we're bringing you today's video. That was kind of a long appearance from her. Usually it's not that quick. As always, guys, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. We've got a ton of videos coming out for you guys. We really love to talk about books. We're going to keep doing it no matter what. But any support you guys want to give us would be greatly appreciated. We would appreciate it more than you could possibly know. So for today, I want to talk about a, a, um, a new book and a new author. This book actually came out this month. It came out uh, early January. So like, I'm not sure if I should say it came out this month or if I should say it came out this year. But it came out very, very, very recently. And it is called The Scarab Mission. The Scarab Mission by, I want to say, James Cambius. Let me uh, let me look it up real quick because I've got it sitting right in front of me. Let me take a look. And uh, that is not it. That's not it either. I want to say James Cambius, but uh, yes, James Cambius. The Scarab Mission by James Cambius. Now, this is a science, science fiction book. So, as always, I'm going to talk about four things. I'm going to talk about the world. I'm going to talk about the characters, the plot, and the writing style. So, The World. This is actually book two. I have not read book one, by the way, but this is book two in his series, The Billion Worlds. Now, this sounds like it should be one of those fantasy type, you know, the, you know, the, uh, um, you know, ring world type of thing, or some of those lines, you know, some big, big galaxy spanning thing, uh, as far as science fiction goes, or some fantasy multiple worlds kind of thing and no actually this is this is actually just very small it's within the solar system within the solar system but humanity is spread out throughout the entire solar system and created multiple maybe a billion i don't know i might be explained in book one uh, as far as um and, and these books by the way to my understanding are not actually related like this is not a direct sequel to the first one or anything like that different characters, things like that. He's just kind of built this world, the, the billion worlds. But um, it, the, the, the world is, again, humanity is expanded out around the solar system. So most of the technology, while advanced and things, you know, cybernetics and artificial intelligences that, that are absolutely considered intelligences just like humans, um, there is no faster than light travel and stuff like that. There is, there is... Um, for sure, uh, um, like cryogenic uh, um, freezing for for long travels and things along those lines, and and you know your 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 hand wave you medical bots and medical stuff. But uh, uh, for the most part, you know some of the tech is obviously very very futuristic. Other the tech seems like things we could devise in the next fifty years. Everything definitely seems like things we could devise in the next few centuries. So humanity spread out throughout the solar system and has basically fractured into to an unknown number of, of societies and governments, all of them individual space habitats that are entire cities, entire that, that are basically city countries, city governments with their own politics, their own armies, their own everything, everything, their own... own laws, regulations, policies. There are wars and battles that get fought between them. So just imagine humanity completely spreading out and then being pretty much fractured into tribes. It's almost tribal all over again, feudal or tribal all, all over again. Um, you've got almost like your core worlds and, and they call them HABs, which are the, the, the space station habitats. Um, and then you've got your more outer rim ones. And we're talking, you know, sometimes travel time between these things can be years, decades. You know, you, you, the short ones might be months, weeks. Because, uh, you know, humanity can only, can only uh, accelerate so fast and survive. So that is also kind of where you get your, your, your differences in, in your tribe. I don't want to keep saying tribes because differences in governments and, and such. But, it's, again, it seems very, very tribal. And if it can be imagined, it's there from from habs and 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 city city governments that are are totalitarian or democratic. Some that are democratic, some that are totalitarian, some that are very very socialist, some that are military juntas, some that are 
pirate, some that are, are based around, around gambling, some that are based around slavery, although theoretically it's been outlawed. So if it can be imagined, it is there somewhere as its own separate entity and government, even if it's been at some point attacked, which leads us into the character. So the main character is Solana. Solana is a, they call him a scarab, but Solana is basically a scavenger. She is a, a mercenary, mercenary scavenger. She's not a mercenary warrior. She's a mercenary scab, scavenger. The scarabs are, are people that, that scavenge. Sometimes they're also pirates. Sometimes they are mercenaries and criminals, uh, but not this particular one. And she works for a ship. Now again, I said the AIs are treated as their own intelligences, so the ship is its own being that hires the scarabs that work with it. And Solana is a scarab that is, is she is a, a scavenger. And they are, well, not, that'll be getting into the plot. Solana is a little bit different in that she is a freed slave, but she was a genetically created, genetically created and then neurologically modified slave. So she is born a slave and she is born to be a slave. So she wears a special set of goggles that actually has programming in it that completely erases faces. She cannot see faces because if she sees faces, she will instantly obey and and have a, a, a burning drive to obey to obey, to do whatever they want. Um, so she wears these goggles that prevent her from seeing faces. She is a, an, basically an engineer, a techie, very, very good with technology. This is very interesting as far as the, the, the worlds go and the characters because the other scarabs that are part of her team, you've got Atman, which is a bird. It's a bird, it's a raven. Uh, but probably the smartest of the entire group. And... Uh, uh, very, very small. Uh, its space suit is actually a sphere. Then you've got uh, Para, Para, which is the dinosaur, with the dinosaur, former military. And then you've got I can't remember I can't remember how to pronounce the name. But the final member is a cyborg, a cyborg with an interesting past as well. So going into the plot now of the book, the group has been hired to to retrieve a dead hab and. When I'm talking habitat, again, remember, these are like cities. These things can hold hundreds of thousands of people, if not more. So this one is dead. This one died. Everybody on it died out decades prior, and it's just been floating, not quite in a terminal orbit, but been been out there floating. It takes too long to get to it, and the ownership of it, now that everybody in it is dead, including the AI brain of it, has been in locked up in in litigation for decades now. Its title has finally been clear. So they the scab the scarabs were hired to actually push it. They were hired to push the habitat, this dead habitat, into another orbit. It's going to take once they give it the push. It's going to take it decades for it to reach the the location that they were hired to put it into. At which point, then it's going to be be scavenged for its its resources. So the scarabs, while they are there, while they are doing this push, they have a finite amount of time to basically loot it, to loot it, try and make some the, some more money, some extra money. And there's some mysteries involved because again, everybody in it died, and nobody knows how. Theoretically, these scarabs are going to be the first ones to ever show up there. Now back to that cyborg character. So the cyborg character has a very limited memory of its uh, of his. Uh, past, uh, almost no memory of its past. The only thing he does know is that based on the trajectory that he was found out in space, it's highly likely that he came from this dead habitat. So he is searching for his, his past. He's actually searching for his own DNA, but he's searching for his past. Whereas Solana is, cert is just out looting it to make money so that she can get a basically brain surgery in a way to erase, to try and erase the programming that is genetically modified inside of her. Then you've got the bird, at Atman, that is a fan of the arts. He is looking for a poet, basically. And then you've got the final one, the dinosaur that is only on this crew actually to hitch a ride. He's still going to try and make whatever money, but he was just hitching a ride. And obviously this hat is going to have some more mysteries to it and some things that people don't quite understand. And 
another group of mercenaries and pirates that show up. Beyond that, I'm not going to give out any spoilers to the plot. The only thing that I did not like about the book is I am not a fan of, of the mental side of, of the Solana character. Absolutely not a fan of it. The backstory was interesting, but unfortunately it comes out as a little bit too rapey, and it also comes out as a little bit too, too, um, um, it's hard to say, like, you know, it's a primary weakness of hers, and kind of a plot point, and a little bit too helpless, that's, that's the best way to put it, turns her into an utterly helpless character, and when you've got a main character, having them be that helpless. She's the main character of the book, and yet she is pretty much, as far as anything that occurs within the book, a side character, a useless side character in a lot of ways. Now, of course, being a techie, she does do some pretty major things that pop up a little bit later, but I, I really, really, really enjoyed the book. I absolutely hated the main character. If there was a sequel that was focused on the main character, I would not read it. Now, if there was a sequel focused on any of the any of the other characters that were in that in that book, I would absolutely read it in a heartbeat. So, great book. Really enjoyed it. The writing style, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's uh, very engaging, very, very difficult, especially once you get about halfway to it's really start rolling and these mysteries really start popping up, you, you have difficulty putting it down. You don't really want to put it down. So, I highly recommend you guys go check out The Scare of Mission by James Cambius. Cambius? I, I don't know how it's pronounced, but C-A-M-B-I-A. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. We'll catch you next time. Bye now.